Hi guys! Okay, so this is gonna be another part of Something's Gotta Give. So, uh, picking up from where I left off last time, here we go! She wished that they had the money to hire some stand-ins, considering the fact that she knew a number of people that would jump at such a deal. Things eventually calmed down and the crew went back to work until Kane returned a few hours later. He looked better, having taken a shower and thrown on some clothes that did not have holes in them, but he still had the air of a vagrant to him. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that he had not combed his hair, so it was still going out in every direction. His outfit, though neat and clean, did not seem to match up. He had on a sleeveless t-shirt with a wild design covering the whole thing. It had an image of sailors fighting off some kind of sea monster in very vibrant colors. He had on cargo pants that were blue fatigue, and then to top it off, he was wearing black flip-flops. Kane, get out of my shot! Manny fled in an exasperated tone while sliding out of his chair to the cool tile floor. He knew that the auburn haired teen would be a pet, but he didn't think it would happen so soon. Shot? Kane muttered slowly as if he didn't know what was going on, and then he looked around, remembering that they were shooting a movie. Oh, yeah, he said in a dazed tone with a low chuckle. You fucking moron, Ruth! Isabel hollered, even though she didn't have anything to do with the scene going on at the moment. Kane just rubbed her the wrong way earlier, and she took pleasure in getting a chance to scream at him again. My fault. Kane apologized for the sluggish, sheepish way while walking out of the shot even slower than that. He seemed to move at the speed of molasses in everything that he did. Even the way he kind of, he kind of drawled out his speech like he was stuck in a freeze frame if he had to say enough words. Isabel growled. So upset with the fact that Kane was alive since he was acting like snails could move faster than he did. She stepped away from what she was doing, namely trying to correct the moves that she had wanted to use in an upcoming fight scene to go yank Kane off of the set. He yelped when she grabbed him by the crew neck of a shirt and flung him into a nearby pillar. Kane smashed into the column but grinned despite the pain in his back. Isabel wanted to let him have it again because of the stupid expression that he was wearing. Do you want me to kill you? Isabel demanded to know. It seemed to be the only explanation for why the slow moving young man was looking at her in the manner that he was, even though he knew what she could do to him by now. Well, I'd go with a smile. Kate replied, still smiling, even though it did hurt his bruised cheek. The area that she had abused earlier was already a deep, dark purple mark and throbbing in a steady rhythm, but he ignored it. Having had plenty of bruises in his life, he had learned to live with them long ago. Isabel snarled, hating Kane more with every second that passed and every time that he moved. The crew had a feeling that shooting in and around Kane's large manor was going to get more interesting with him around. They were absolutely correct, too. Things quickly reached a point where Isabel's mood soured even before she even saw Kane. It was like she could sense him within a 50-foot radius, and she would frown before he even got near her. Kane did not seem to notice, or he at least pretended not to notice. Isabel was the only person in the crew that had grown to dislike Kane. When given a chance, everyone found that he had a boyish charm and was a wonderful comforting presence because he was so easygoing. Many of the women especially found him to be cute and seemed to love when he came to flirt with them, which he did shamelessly with almost every female that happened to catch his eye. It was clear that he was not serious. But the ladies liked the attention nonetheless from the muscular, athletic young man. All except Isabel, anyway. Since Isabel seemed to have an early warning system when it came to Kane, by the time he came over to interact with her, she was pretty much steaming from her anger with his presence. 
So, he did not have much time to act or say something really perverse before she began beating him over the head with the nearest object. Finding her fist to just not be enough to knock some sense into him. Apparently, there was no getting through to him, though. Hey, Bella. Came happily to me as he met up behind his mouth. He can already practically see smoke coming out of her ears after having to deal with him for over a week. He loved that Manny was using most of his house and property for his film because it gave him a chance to be around his mouth. I've told you not to call me that. Isabel growled through clenched teeth while not bothering to turn around to face him. He already knew from the past that her face was getting flushed with scarlet due to her irritation of him just there and breathing. He wondered what it was about his presence that just infuriated her so much, but he knew that he enjoyed it. She was so absolutely gorgeous when she was upset after all. You've told me a lot of things, he remarked with his usual grin. Er, you've told me a lot of things, he remarked with his usual grin. Everyone noticed that he grinned often and wide while around his mouth. When he was with other people, he smiled at it, but the expression was never quite a grin. His violet eyes shined when he looked at her and sparkled when he grinned in her presence. Listen to me, his mouth was interrupted by the little pest. Scream my name? I'd love to! King practically howled in a delighted expression lit up his royal colored eyes. It was inappropriate lines like that that got him clobbered by her. Isabel's eyes twitched in pure burning irritation. She turned around swiftly, punching Kane right in the gut, her knuckles feeling some resistance while her mind was calmed momentarily thanks to the blow. He coughed in agony and slid back while putting a hand to his injured stomach. He closed one eye from the agony and stared at her with a pained smile. It seemed like all he could do was smile at her, no matter what. Oh man, she hit me really hard, Kane muttered mentally. You know, I'm starting to think that you're really trying to hurt me, Bella, he commented with a forced laugh. Will you just go the fuck away? Isabel ordered him in a bellow, pointing off in the distance. Her face was bright ruby from the absolute rage that she felt toward him, and if she could just devour him to be rid of him, she would have done it at that very moment. Actually, she would have done it days ago. I never walk away from a challenge, or a beautiful woman, Kane replied, both of which you are, he pointed out with a smile. Isabel just curled her lip in disgust and went to shock him again. She swung on him, but he surprised her and caught her fist that time. She snarled like a troubled beast. He seemed to make it a habit to catch her attacks after an initial blow. The fact that he could catch her attacks only made her way to want to destroy him even more. How the hell can someone so slow be so fucking fast? You only get one, Bella. King commented with a smile and wiggled his burgundy eyebrows at her. You're infuriating, Isabel screamed while violently snatching her fist back. I try my best, he, rep he replied, still in good spirits, despite the fact that he was pretty sure he would be pissing a lot of men around. The raven-haired martial artist only screamed again, leaving the area to avoid having to be around the pest anymore. Cam laughed, even though it was hurting his stomach. Manny came over once the coast was clear and laughed at his friend, as he tended to do after Isabel let the short fellow had it. Why do you keep doing this to yourself? Manny asked curiously. He had never witnessed a person take such abuse, all for the sake of trying to pick up a woman, no matter how sexy that woman happened to be. I love her, Kane answered with a laugh. Why do you always love things that will probably kill you? Manny inquired in a puzzled tone while shaking his head slightly, being careful not to knock off the plain light blue baseball cap that he was wearing. He did not take his friend's declaration of love for Isabel as anything more than Kane's love for mountain climbing or skydiving, which was how Kane meant his statement anyway. I don't know. 
How can you not love something that'll probably kill you? He encountered as if that made any sense. He honestly did not know what kept drawing him to Isabel. Aside from the fact that he had a taste for extreme dangerous things, and she was the very definition of extremely dangerous to him. She was like the opposite end of a magnet for him, and he just kept getting pulled to her. Trust me, man. Stay away from her. Her stress levels are only climbing with everything that she's got to change now that she's figured out I lied to her about how good these morons, morons martial, artists, martial arts skills are. Ugh. I cannot talk to the guys. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna start Manny's part over again. So, trust me, man. Stay away from her. Her stress levels are only climbing with everything that she's gotta change now that she's figured out I lied to her about how good these morons' martial arts skills are. Manny remarked. He had to tell one whopper of a lie to get Isabel to sign on for the project, and he doubted that he would ever hear the end of it. For it from her when the movie was finally done. Hell, she might never work with him again when the movie was finally done, especially if she associated him with Cain in her mind, since Cain was his friend. Why do you always lie to your friends? Cain asked more as a joke than anything else, even though it was a trend for men to lie his ass off when he wanted something from his friends. How else am I supposed to get you jerks to help me out? I know cool people who don't give a damn about helping me. Manny chuckled. Maybe because you're always lying to us. The short and mouth counter. Hell, you lie to me all the damn time and I knew nothing but help your ass out if I have a chance for you ask. And you ask. And if I remember it, I'm not lost in the wilderness or something. He was known for forgetting things and getting lost somewhere in the mountains much of the time. Shut up. Go and take care of your stomach. I know it's killing you. Cain only laughed, but that was the truth. He walked off to your taking care of his abdomen while thinking of his mouth. He was genuinely attracted to her, even though it was easy to see that she disliked him. He figured that he should be able to wear her down somewhat, believing that he was already in her system, which was why she had some strong feelings for him. Sure, they were negative feelings, but he had to start somewhere. Maybe her appeal came from the fact that she took his charm and threw it back in his face, rather than eating it up like everyone else did. Maybe he wanted her because he couldn't have her. Or maybe Cupid had gotten him. He didn't know and didn't care. He just wanted that very fascinating and dangerous woman. Isabel, for her part, found herself hating Cain with a passion. And every time she thought that she could not possibly hate him more, he did something to prove her wrong. She doubted that she had ever detested someone as much as Cain, especially in such a short amount of time. She couldn't wait to get away from the annoying little pet. She especially disliked the way that he had a tendency of catching her punches. That irked her to no end. How can someone that moves at the patient pace of a glacier react fast enough to catch my attack. Isabel could not figure it out. Kane dragged around going slower than evolution for the most part, but she could almost never hit him a second time after catching him with the first blow. It was becoming beyond embarrassing. After all, she was a master martial artist and he was, well, Kane. Kane, to Isabel's observation was a lazy oaf, and that was being kind about things. He flirted with everything that had breath and always managed to throw up a shot, usually by walking through it. <laughs> Manny joked that he should hire Kane as an extra and just have him as a running gag throughout the movie. Whenever Kane ended up at a shot, it took over a minute to get him to realize his mistake. And then it took him way too long to finally get out of the way. He always apologized, but that did not excuse the fact that he was a moron. 
So how can something obvious idiot catch my attacks? Isabel tried to wipe Jane from her thoughts and get back to what was really important, namely mapping out the next fight team. She was thankful that she had the piece to get everything together, and she was rather proud of what she had worked out. When it came time to shoot the scene, she had a wonderful feeling that it was going to be perfect. She smiled to herself as the actors got into position, and then suddenly her smile vanished, but no one noticed. No, 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 is about muttering in a panic while her eyes frantically scanned around as if she expected a bomb to drop. What's wrong? Danny asked when he noticed the overall expression on his fight choreographer's face. He's coming. Don't let him walk in the shot! He's coming. Don't let him walk in the shot, Isabel ordered harshly. Her face tensed and a snarl tugged at her full top lip. He? Who? The director inquired. His face scrunched up and he scratched the top of his head as he regarded Isabel as she was out of her mind. He did not recall Isabel suffering from insanity, but he honestly would not be surprised to find it ran in her family. Who else? Kane is about growled in anger while making a fist. Apparently ready to beat the tiny snot up before he had even done anything. Kane? Nanny looked around and then shook his head. I don't see the little guy. I think he went out with a couple of assistants for some beer or something. No, no, no. He's coming, and I know that dumb bastard is gonna walk in the fucking chat, and I'm gonna have to beat the living shit out of him, little bitch. Isabel stated soundly. There did not seem to be any talking her out of that one, but luckily for Kane, he was nowhere around. Many thought that Isabel was just being paranoid because they were about to shoot one of the big fight scenes in the movie. Kane was nowhere around as far as he knew. The shot was safe. For ten seconds. It would seem that Isabel's prophecy of sheer endurance was right on the money, because Kane came in along right into the shot, right into the middle of the fight. Kane seemed totally surprised when he was almost kicked in the mouth. He reacted in a split second and avoided the hit, but found himself dodging other attacks. He had no idea what was going on. But he was doing his best not to get his jaw broken. Kane! Isabel halted in a tone that would have made the devil himself run for cover. The crew would have all signed sworn affidavits that pure blue flames rose off of Isabel as she marched towards him. They all prayed for his soul and then took breath on how she was going to kill him, snapping his neck being the one favored by them. She certainly was wearing a twisted head off his shoulders expression. King gulped when he noticed Isabel coming toward him, looking not at all happy and not in the way he was used to seeing, when the act while the actors finally stopped attacking him. He appeared worried for the first time to all of his guests. He threw a big apologetic grin on his face, seeming to finally realize what he had done that was so wrong. He now knew that he was standing in the middle of her shot. Bella, Kane started to say with a nervous laugh, but he did not make it past the little nickname that he enjoyed using for her. That one word did not help his current situation, which the crew believes could best be described as totally fucked. I told you, stop calling me that, is about her wrath coming out full of force in her voice as she glared at him with pure hatred. She came in for the attack that was supposed to be his death. Kane yelped like a frightened puppy as he fairly avoided a thundering straight right hand from Isabel. He was certain that he felt the pressure wave from the force behind the blow. 
She kept coming and he just kept dodging. Which only served to infuriate her further. Kane was starting to get the idea that he did not want one of her hits to actually connect with him fully. So along with dodging, he started blocking. His squirrels were stinging quickly from that quick of action. But he preferred that to his chest and abdomen being punched in and having his bones collapse into his torso. Sorry about that. Had to uh, um, wet my throat a little bit. Getting a little dry. <clears throat> anyway, Isabel only seemed to get madder with every block and dodge from the short man. Her pale face flushed a bright red and she scowled so deeply that it looked like the frown lines would cut her face open. She changed from throwing punches to some very powerful kicks. Kane made a panicked face as he ducked, narrowly missing having his neck broken with a kick. He flipped out of the way, but she kept coming at him, each kick more deadly than the last. He caught her leg, hoping that they could talk things out before she squatted him. Bella, I didn't mean it! Kane apologized quite sincerely, and his voice was weak with desperation for her to accept his words. His eyes pled with her to just leave him. He was certain to throw his hand up and surrender, but he was certain that she would break his whole body as soon as he let her go. Stop fucking calling me that! And goddammit, stand the fuck still! Isabel commanded while well, taking her leg back to continue her attack. Kane was ready to cry which further shocked the audience of the pair had, considering the fact that Kane had been nothing but jubilant since he showed up, even when Isabel was out to harm him. He blocked Isabel a few more times, but then she came at him with a death kick. Kane was not sure what hit him, but he refused to believe that it was a human leg. The sound of her foot crashing against his skull was quite the disgusting crunch, and everyone was certain that, but, and everyone was certain that she had cracked his head open like an eggshell with that move. His head stopped to the side, and he collapsed to the ground, blood oozing from his mouth and nose, dripping on the cold marble. He fell to his side, but caught himself on his knees, and with one weak hand that shook as it tried to support him. His eyes were wide as if he were in total shock, and for the first time did not look at Isabel with his usual cheery playfulness in his regal eyes. He actually looked hurt beyond the physical pain that he was in. And he was in quite a bit of that. It was as if he actually viewed himself as a victim, and she was a criminal who had wounded him on every level possible. Isabel huffed, surprising everyone that cold black smoke did not come out of her nose. She felt odd about her seeming victory. She was not satisfied or sated with Kane being on his knees, hurt and bleeding, and it was not because she wanted to pummel him again. She was bothered by his expression and the fact that he was staring at her, not with bright delight and eyes, but with agony, hurt, and despair. His throat tightened and went dry. Her hands uncoiled themselves without any commands from her brain. Her nerves relaxed in some way, not looking to harm Kane any further. But the nerves also tensed from her current circumstances. She turned away from him, not wanting to see his shocked and wounded eyes anymore. Such an ass, Isabel muttered with a crack in her voice. 
the hall walking away, hoping that the flaming goat would vanish when she could no longer see him. King did not utter a retort and, may, and remained stunned on the ground. The physical anguish and mental shock kept him pinned to the ground. But even if those were not there, he still would not have been able to get up from the space that he was kneeling at. His emotions, tattered and shattered, cemented him to his place on the vast bus mat, which was where the filming had been taking place. Then he went over to Kane and helped him up. Momentarily, Manny considered hitting Kane with an I told you so, but he could see that it was not the time for that. It was very rare for him to see Kane genuinely hurt, especially emotional. Usually, the shorter fellow could laugh anything off and smile to the most severe view because it never faced him. Apparently, Kane actually felt something toward Isabel and was not just playing around with her for the simple fact that he was a passive sort, or because she was just damn sexy. Did Cupid manage to shoot the wild man that was Kane? Manny was starting to believe that an arrow was probably in the dead center of his friend's heart. Or maybe... right between the eyes, which would explain why his brain no longer worked. You okay? Manny asked Kane with some concern in his way. She hates me, doesn't she? Kane muttered and his voice cracked as his eyes watered. He was disappointed and appalled with what he knew to be a fact. He didn't even have to ask the question, but maybe he was looking for some hope that things were different from what he knew. Manny wanted to let out a loud, duh, but it was not the time for that. <clears throat> Sorry. He helped Kane into the house, which the smaller man didn't need assistance in doing. Everyone else put the set back in, in the place to do another take of the fight scene, pretending not to notice. brooding fight choreographer. Isabel watched King go off. He was limping slightly, blocking her lower kicks with his shins and already caught up with him. She felt the clenching around her heart. Damn guilt, she thought with a huff. Wait, is it really guilt? It has to be guilt, Isabel told herself almost immediately. Her heart felt like it was being wrapped in razor-sharp barbed wire that was being gradually tightened. There was a burning in her throat that mean that most people would have felt was nervousness. But she marked it off as a symptom of guilt as she thought was the illness that she, that, as she thought that was the illness that she was currently suffering from. A grinding, boiling sensation in her stomach followed, and it felt like her insides went to devour each other. Why do I feel guilty about throttling Cain? The fool deserved it. He had ruined one of the biggest scenes in the movie that she had invested a lot of time, effort, and thought in. She was trying to prove herself, and he continually messed everything up. He's such a fucking jerk. And why the fuck did he have to look at me like that? It wasn't like she had enjoyed giving him what he seemed to be begging for. It was just to teach him a lesson. So, he didn't have any right to look at me like I did something wrong. He was the one that was wrong. She never even said it. She had only given him what he deserved. Right, so there's no reason for me to feel guilty. She insisted. It did not stop her from being that way. Isabel only began to feel worse when Kane resumed his pesky attic the next. The next day, while sporting a lot of bruises, 
Especially dark ones on his face. As he limped around, his smile seemed to be the same to everyone, except for Isabel. He was finally leaving her alone, which she swore she wanted, but it was suddenly bothering her. He no longer flirted with her, got in the way, or even grinned that stupid, almost lazy grin at her. He kept his distance, and that aggravated her, which she did not want to acknowledge because she thought that was just plain crazy. Why the hell am I bothered by him getting away from me when that's what the hell I wanted in the first place? Watching came from a distance. Isabel started to be consumed by the thought that the little guy was not so awful. He was pleasant to everyone, even though he flirted with all the ladies. But there did not seem to be anything real between him and any of them. He threw his money around like water offering to take everyone out of the town every night, which most people think him up on. He never complained about anything, even if he knew that some people were hanging around him just because he paid for everything. He continued to make his usual mistakes, <coughs> excuse me, walking through the shops and things like that. But they, but they did not seem so major anymore. And Isabel amazingly just felt worse about herself as she watched him. She realized that King probably thought she was a jackass and would explain why he was now winning her. He probably hated her now and that idea did not sit well with her any more than her guilt did. She felt such turmoil inside of her. Like her insides were forever falling into a bottomless pit while turning against each other. How the hell can such a passive man cause such a reaction inside of me? Maybe it's because he's not really being a pest to learn to consider. Isabel felt unsure of herself, which was not a common occurrence. In fact, it typically only happened when she was in the presence of her mother. But her mother was thousands of miles away, and there was a large ocean between them. Thankfully, Kane was the cause of her current anxiety, and it seemed like there was just as much distance between the two of them as there was between her and her mother. Yet, there was only a door between them. A rather elaborate, elegantly designed pair of doors but only a door and on the left. The crew was gone, moving on to a new location. She had stayed behind, making up the excuse that she wanted to explore Italy for a few days. She assured them that she would meet them back in the States before they needed her again. No one argued with her, knowing Isabel to be a woman of her word and very professional when it came to her business. Besides, there was no way she, that she would screw up her first time doing her job on her own. She just did not want to leave on a sour note, which was why she was standing outside of the door of the room that Katie was currently in. Isabel took a deep breath before she knocked on the door. Kane answered in his light-hearted voice, granting whoever was at the door permission to enter. Isabel wordlessly went into the room, finding out that it was a little gym. Kane was on the far side of the room, kicking a heavy bag. He has good form, she noted. Apparently, he was not a total idiot, although she would have guessed that he had some intelligence in the hand to hand combat if she had been looking to give him any type of credit in regards to anything at all. Oh, hey, Isabel, Kane said when he noticed who came in. Saying her full name seemed to come as an afterthought, and it did not roll well off his head. It was almost as if he was speaking another language that he did not know well when saying her name. When saying her name. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting, Isabel replied as he halted his exercise to pay her some mind. Although she did not seem to have his full attention. 
His purple eyes wandered about the room, the ceiling, and floor before eventually resting on her roof, resting on her roof mate. Oh. Sorry. Oh no, I just thought everyone was gone and I needed something to do. Not much fun in this place when I'm the only one around. Can you explain with a half smile on the shrug? Isabel nodded. It was something that she could get at, but not understand. She imagined that being alone in such a vast mansion was a lonely existence. It had not occurred to her that he would be on his own and come out. There were no servants around, and Kane did not seem to have any family. She had learned through May that Kane, Kane, yeah, why did I just call him Kate? What the fuck? Anyway, Kane's parents had died less than a year ago in a car accident, and his extended family just left him to his own devices because he seemed to like it that way, and he was a bit of a black sheep. He was actually known as the Wild Cat by his friends and family. He seemed to like being on his own, but now that she thought about it, he had to get lonely sometimes if it was just him around. So, what can I do for you? Isabel, Kane asked, once again forcing her front name out of his mouth. Isabel shifted uncomfortably on the balls of her feet her black sandals making a slight clicking noise in her movement. His tone was making her feel uneasy, and she felt like she had made a mistake coming to set things straight with him. As soon as that thought entered her mind, she gathered her resolve. She could not leave there, allowing him to believe that she was a devil incarnate. After all, she was actually pretty friendly if given the chance. I just came in because I wanted to say sorry. Isabel informed him. I just came in because I wanted to say... Sorry. Isabel informed him, forcing out the apology as if it was offensive. Despite the fact that she could admit fault if it was necessary, she was not in the habit of apologizing and disliked it a great deal. Her tongue had to force the words past her teeth, which also tried to offer up some resistance to keep her from speaking that dreaded awful word. she might be apologizing for. Manny had him convinced that everything that happened was his fault for bothering Isabel after being told several times that she was under a lot of stress and serious pressure. He agreed with that assessment. Excuse me. He was pressing her at a terrible time, a bad time that he was vaguely aware of and not seen respect. 
So she hadn't been in the right spot in her mouth for a while. The way I've been treating you, I mean, you're annoying as hell. Don't get me wrong. You are fucking annoying. But I've been really mean to you, and you don't deserve most of it. And you deserve most of it. <laughs> is my said. And she would have continued, but came time. Um, so why are you sorry again? The Auburn hand male inquired, was scratching the top of his head. After all, it sounds like, according to you, it's all my fault. Just like you already said. Sorry, this apology isn't going the way I want it to be there. I don't think you're a total jerk though, and I don't want you to think I am. It's not that. Going simple to avoid getting into the fact that she did think that he was irksome and wanted him to be very aware of that. Kane shrugged nonchalantly. I don't think you're a jerk at all. He tried to whisper at her. Okay. That's good. I don't want you to hate me or anything, she said with a small smile and a light in her emerald eyes that showed relief. I mean, I'm not a horrible person or anything, and I don't want anyone to think that. I guess, of course, I hate them or something. But the point is, I don't want you to hate me. Princess! In normal. Hate you? Kane echoed, twisting up his mouth and regarding her as if she were insane. Hate her? Yeah, right. It wasn't possible. Someone as interesting and lovely as she was could only be a matter of intrigue for him, and that was at the very least. He didn't conceive, he didn't even conceive what the most was that could have made between them. You do hate me? Is the last because she couldn't place his tone. Kane didn't respond. He marched over to Isabel and looked up at her. It was a bit embarrassing to him that she, the object of his interest, was so much taller than he was. It was bad enough that he thought she detested him, but to not measure up to her physically was not helping him as far as he was concerned. After she had dropped him that last time, he started considering that she didn't respond to him as he would like, because he was short. Which he thought might be a sign, might be seen as a sign of being unmarried. Someone like her probably went from the tall, dark, and handsome type. Well, two out of three can't be so bad. Or so he hoped. You're kidding, right? Hate you? You're yeah, right. Kane replied with a smile and a soft to brush that idea off. Isabel sighed in, almost sighed in relief. But she caught herself. With him standing so close now, she could smell the effort of his workout. It was subtle, but attention grabbing, in a good way. Suits him perfectly, actually. She eyed him studiously, finally taking in his complete form. Yes, he was short, but he was built wide at the shoulders. He was wearing a sleeveless t-shirt, so she could not see his torso, but his arms were plainly on display and they were thick and cut with muscle. She suspected that his chest and abdomen were the same. If she recalled punching him in the stomach, she could remember her fists colliding with tight muscles. He's probably ripped under that shirt, she thought. She tried to ignore the excitement that rushed through her with that notion. It didn't work. Isabel flushed at the thought of Cain without her shirt, and then she shook that away before the blush was very noticeable on her pale skin. To get that off of her mind, she did something awkward. She placed her hand on the top of his head and petted him, almost like a pet or a small child. Kane swung the hand on his head and his jaw tightened. He caught himself before he frowned because he didn't want to totally wreck the moment, even though she was doing a good job of it without his help. He already thought that she looked at him as much than a man for a tight, and now she was petting him. He took a deep, he took a breath to remain calm and tried his best to smile at her. The found the expression was in the forthcoming.
plan to clear that up then. And he must name him with the brain smile. If she continued to caress his head, she has such a pretty smile. Now, if only she'd stop fucking petting me like I was a goddamn toy poodle. Now, we've got one other matter to clear up, Caden commented. One other matter? She asked, curiously, raising an elegant eyebrow. Caden's mouth was on hers before she realized what was going on. Her first instinct was to push him away, but before she could act on that, she noticed that his lips were sweet and gentle against her own. It was not a harsh embrace in any way, but delightful, almost loving. So, instead of forcing him away from her, she returned the kiss, pressing his head to her, since her hand was already resting on his head. The sensation caused a moan between them, but it was too low for them to know who the culprit was. They ended up pulling away for air after a minute. God, you are so damn hot, Kane said in a heated whisper. This is what you want from me? And not inquired her voice low and breathy. She did not sound insulted, only curious. She supposed that it made some sense. Maybe he had been being impressed because he thought that she would find it cute. Somewhere underneath all of her annoyance, deep underneath it, a part of her did think that he was just plain adorable. If you don't want it, you're free to leave right now and never see me again, though, he pointed out. He would not attempt to force her into anything or even lead her on. If she did not want him, then he would accept it. Of course, I won't like it. Isabel pondered the matter for a couple of seconds, mentally and sensuously. Her body... Her mind and body were not adverse to the idea of being with Kane. He was a fascinating little fellow. <clears throat> Excuse me. God, I am just a book of issues today, guys. I'm sorry. With a tantalizing body and interesting personality, even if he was a pet, he was not a bad guy from what she could tell. Plus, his kiss was just a moment. The most pleasant thing that she could think of at the moment. It sent shivers to her that she never considered possible, and she honestly wanted more. The raven haired beauty leaned down and placed a blazing kiss on Kane's soft lips. It was his turn to be shocked. Part of him actually thought that she would walk away from him. The fear and his thought was banished with his thought. When her mouth was on his, kissing him fiercely, almost possessively, she covered the oval shaped face with her hands and gently rubbed his jaw as their mouths continued to move against each other in a passionate way like heated whirlpools mixing, sending warmth throughout both of their bodies. They craved more and the touch became hotter, threatening to overwhelm them. Kane began gently laughing at Isabel's delicious full lips, like a cat taking in milk. She gave him what he desired, opening her mouth for him to enter. His tongue attacked hers with a vigor that she did not expect. The contact was intense, making it seem like lightning had shot through them. The energy, the, the energy that she felt thanks to him made her want to touch his skin, caress his body and merge with him. She moved her hands from his face and stroked his torso with some pressure. Mentally, she frowned because the shirt was in the way of the terrain that she wished to explore. She decided to move the cotton barrier without, without his permission, having to bring the contact when they kissed to do so. He whined as her lips abandoned him until she realized that until he realized what she was doing. As soon as the shirt was on, her greedy hands were on his friend's chest. Her fingers, 
Your finger is running smooth on the skin. Our lips began pressing. Hot kisses to his jaw. Bella. Bella. Kane muttered, panting slightly because of her attention. It felt like he was being massaged by cool water. Cool river water on a hot day, even though the rubbing was the renewing night of his lair further. He was not too sure what he really wanted to say, thanks to those distracting fingers of hers. It would seem that her hands could do much more than bruise his form. And I'm going to stop there for today. Kind of leave it on a little bit of a cliffhanger for you guys. Um, I hope everyone, you know, watches the series because I really want people to enjoy what I'm having to share. So watch, like, comment, subscribe, and keep your eyes peeled for the next part. Um, I'm decided that my update schedule for this is probably going to be Wednesdays and Saturdays. That might change depending on what happens in my life, but as of right now, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Thanks for watching, guys.